Okay, welcome to this IGCSE Marine Science video on section 1.2 Plate Tectonics. If you've done any geology before, you might have heard of this before. Um, the syllabus here wants us to explain that the Earth's crust is made of, of different tectonic plates and that they float on the mantle on the hot rock beneath it and how the present-day continents and oceans are the result of the break-off of a supercontinent. We'll get into that more in detail. We will describe convergent, divergent and transform style boundaries, explain how movement of plates at different types of plate boundaries can give rise to earthquake and volcanoes. We will talk about how tsunamis can be formed, especially by earthquakes, and outline the effect of tsunamis on the marine ecosystems and the human coastal communities. So, it's got a bit of geology and physics, so let's roll. So, the theory of plate tectonics is actually one of the major scientific breakthroughs. Um, the current ITCSE syllabus doesn't go into much detail, but I will link further below here to a AS level video I made to go into much more detail about the discovery of the theory of plate tectonics and the evidence for it. Um, important here is to understand that we now know that inside the Earth we have all the molten rock and the molten rock does not stay still. Like when we're cooking porridge, some of it will then start boiling and it will rise and it will cool down and fall down again, it will rise cool down fall again. If you've ever seen a lava lamp, for example, this is what we see. And this here is called a convection current, and it means that there is very slowly moving in all this magma here, there are currents, and our thin crust lying on top here will float on that. So some of the plates will be drifting apart, and other plates will be drifting towards each other. So using computer models, looking at science we can look on where these boundaries are and these boundaries are important because when we have a boundary between two plates either a divergent going away or a convergent going towards each other or transform next to each other we will see much more activity of earthquakes and volcanoes so for example denmark where i'm from we're in the middle of a plate so we have no earthquakes while iceland who lies right on the edge between two plates, they have much more volcanic activity than we'll ever see here in Denmark. By the way, volcanic activity under the water is super exciting, as it has created the entire mid-Atlantic ocean ridge, which we'll get into much more detail on later. So here we see a map of the major boundaries of tectonic plates on Earth as we understand them now. And we do see this movement, we can actually see it by, by GPS coordinates. Uh, the Earth is slowly changing. Um, and for example, the Atlantic Ocean keeps getting bigger, a few centimeters a year, while the Pacific will continuously get smaller. So these boundaries here are, of course, important to know where they are if you want to predict where you can find earthquakes and where you can find activity, but also a bit outside the syllabus here if you're looking at things as geothermal uh, energy where we take energy from the hot lava there will tend to be more when we are on a thin crust or we are closer to a, a boundary this is again an example on why iceland has so much free geothermic energy so our current theory now also supported by geology and by the different um, fossils we find is that we used to have one huge supercontinent called Pangaea, and Pangaea then split into two continents and then as time goes on we have this split here so this is important because this also changes the shapes of our oceans in the beginning we had a supercontinent and everything else was ocean but now we get the continents moving around uh, and that means that we now have our five different main oceans, which we'll go into much more detail on in the next chapter. It's also important to understand that um, this is not just something that happened in the past. It will keep happening. For example, the Indian subcontinent keep pushing into the Asian subcontinent and thereby creating the Himalayan. 
So the Himalaya mountains are actually getting pushed higher and higher every year. If you go high up on Mount Everest, I haven't, I'm not that good a climber, but if you go up high on Mount Everest, you'll actually see fossil from seabeds. So the top of the highest mountains now used to be 60, 70 million years ago, a seabed. So our planet is changing and our geology is changing and it will continue to do so in the future. If we could take a time machine and go forward, maybe like two to three million years, I think we'll start seeing an ocean appearing in Africa where we have the Great Rift Valley that keeps splitting more and more. So far, what we covered is probably stuff you heard about already in your science classes. But now we get into the three different kind of boundaries, divergent, convergent, and transform boundaries. And to kind of do a very bad animation of it, I here have these two little pieces of foam. Uh, the upper part here is a crust, and then below we, we have the hot magma. If you have the two plates together here, and the plate tends to start drifting apart very, very slowly, a crack will start appearing between them. This is what we call a divergent boundary. When we have a divergent boundary here, it is like taking the lid off a boiling uh, bowl of soup and things will start coming up. And this is not nice hot soup, this is magma. So this is why on the mid-Atlantic uh, ridge, where we have the uh, plates going apart, we see that there keep being underwater volcanoes who will keep creating new rocks. It will keep creating new seabed. So where we have the divergent boundaries, we tend to have volcanoes, we tend to have the mid-ocean ridges, we can have some earthquakes uh, if there's a sudden movement, and we'll also very often see hydrothermal vents where we have cold water seeping in and coming up then filled with minerals. A convergent boundary, on the other, if we have two plates pushing into each other, and when they do that, eventually either they'll start going up or start going down. If we start going up like this, we will form mountains. If we start going down like this, we will form ocean trenches. So when the convergent boundaries push together here, there tend to be a lot of energy, and then we will see that released in earthquakes. Um, so the earthquakes here, the sudden movement, can be one thing. I'll talk about later, a sudden movement underwater can cause tsunamis. There can be some volcanoes on land, and we can have ocean trenches. The last thing we have are the transform boundaries here. Then we have two plates gliding up next to each other, and a quite well known of them is the San Andreas boundary in California. When that happens, the energy when they need to slide next to each other, tend to be released in the form of earthquakes. So if we have a transform boundary, we quite often see an effect that there's earthquakes where that happens. So very bad model here. You can do the same with Oreos. That's even more fun, and you get to eat them afterwards. But just think about the place can either move towards each other, away from each other, or against each other. So the next thing here uh, is about tsunamis. Uh, tsunamis occur when we have a large volume of water getting pushed quickly. So let's say we have two plates pushing against each other, and they're pushing and they're pushing and pushing, and then energy release, we have an earthquake, and one of the plates moves. Now, now it's just a small piece of foam, but if this was like billions of tons of rock underwater just moving, they will push water. And when they push water, we have an energy wave that start forming and pushing very, very quickly. Out in the open ocean, a tsunami like this is not dangerous because it just travels quickly. But as it grows nearer and nearer the coast, as the water then gets lower, our fast wave will start slowing down. And as it starts slowing down, it starts rising up. And this is where the trouble starts. Because as it rises up here and it slows down, it will break and it'll go inland and it can cause destruction, as we have seen a um, few times in the Pacific. Tsunamis can also be caused by other events like 
uh, huge volcanic eruptions. They can be caused by meteor strikes. They can be caused by underwater landslides. Um, but we usually see them when we have an earthquake underwater. And that's why you might hear if there's been an earthquake somewhere. They also say that it's a tsunami warning, figuring out if this will turn into a tsunami. So tsunamis can be incredibly damaging uh, to the human population living near the coast. One thing, of course, is the immediate destruction. And this actually happens in two times, not just one. First is when the water rushes into land, it can destroy houses, cut down trees, sweep away cars, destroy infrastructure. But also when the water goes back out again, it'll drag cars and stuff with it. And if you have cars, um, parts of houses, trees, all that floating in the water coming back, it can add even more destruction to the buildings and the structures we'll see around it. Secondly, we will also tend to see a lot of damage to farmland. farmland is caught by salt water will for the next couple of years not be very good farmland. We will also see uh, damage um, to fishing boats. Fishing boats will get destroyed or swept into land. Um, and also pollution. Pollution usually comes the other way when the wave have moved into land and it destroyed cars, oil depots, chemical depots, whatever. When that comes back out it drags a trail of, of dangerous chemicals, oil, both over the farmland and back into the ocean. And last, so the people live there, now they maybe lost their homes, they lost their fishing boats, their infrastructure destroyed, there's pollution now, and tourism is also often very important here, but tourism also tends to take a blow after we've seen destruction by tsunamis. There are some things that can help uh, lessen the impact, both coral reefs and mangrove forests are natural breakwaters that will tend to slow down the energy from the waves. Unfortunately, we humans have a bad habit of destroying both coral reefs and the mangrove forests, so there is now less protection against these kind of disasters.